So let's start. Um, hi, my name is uh, Edward Lucena. I usually can be found on IRC or social media like Streamboy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Fedora i3 spin, the new spin that was released in, right now in Fedora 34. Today, we are going to talk about the i3 window manager. But uh, before starting to talk about the, the i3 window manager, uh, I'm going to tell you what is a tilling window manager and what is specifically i3 window manager. I'm going to talk about the Fedora i3 C, the special interest group that is working to create the Fedora i3 spin, uh, a little bit of the history of the group, what are the objectives. Uh, we're going to talk about the Fedora i3 spin. We're going to have a little demo. And at the end, uh, I'm going to share the, the contacts for you to join to the team or collaborate in anything, uh, any way you can uh, help the team. So <clears throat> what is the i3 window manager? Uh, a window manager is the software that controls the window's position in a graphical environment. Uh, every desktop environment has a window manager because it's a separate software that uh, is in charge of put the window in the position that it's going to be. Uh, in that regards, a tilling window manager is a window manager that doesn't require any other extra software. And it put the, um, the windows in uh, order it in form of tiles, or it, she give the treatment of to each window of a tile. So uh, the windows are not overlapping one of each other, but they are put uh, in uh, a side of them or below them or above them. And, and specifically, the i3 window manager is a tilling window manager that is written to be easily used by users and be to be easy to configure. How is that? Well, normally Windows Manager, are, um, the configuration of, of the Tilling Windows Manager is done in the language of, of the programming language of the Tilling Windows Manager is written. In the case of i3, even when it's written in C, C, I'm pretty sure that is uh, mostly C, the C language, and uh, it used an RC file to be configured or a config file that is not uh, written in a, programming language. So it's easier to write and you don't require any specific knowledge of a um, uh, programming language. So the Fedora i3 seek a little bit of history. Uh, it was like five years ago, maybe a little more, when the first my share uh, committee get together in a presence meeting, uh, I was presented by Justin. Uh, I was using at that time Cinnamon because it was very low of resources uh, and it was easy to use for me, but because I have a modest machine and he showed me the i3 with the manager, uh, it showed me how little resources it uses. And I start to testing and use it for myself and I get used to it. And right now I'm not, I don't stop using it. It's really, really easy to use. My workflow uh, adjusted to that uh, metaphor of the of desktop really easily. And uh, after that, I was starting to create the idea from several people that was using i3 to create something that get i3 directly into the distribution without any other desktop environment. So who wanted to work with, who who liked it, that idea, um, I start to give uh, very, very good feedback. Um, when I started the SIG, the first one, one of the first ones to be in there is uh, Dan Samala or Defolos as we know it. And it turns that Defolos is the maintainer of the i3 package on Fedora. So it was very, very helpful. <clears throat> it was very, very helpful to have, to have him in the in the team because he knows exactly how the i3 with manager is greeting and how to help. 
and I put together kind of team. A lot of people just uh, 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 say, hey, why not? We are going to do it. It's a great environment. I'm already using it. Um, also, I contacted Ben Cotton, that is the federal program manager, um, tell me that, yes, yeah, why not? The SIG is something that is easily to use. You just need, uh, I have a visitor here. He can say hi. Um, I have a, uh, I know two or three people that uh, are using it in Red Hat and I'm going to put you in contact uh, with them. And they already have a document that was basically the base we used to create the ISP, having the the things that they saw, which uh, should be included in the in the distro, you know, in the in a in the spin. So we started to having some packages that we saw are uh, vital are vital to the to the spin. Um, we started to discuss, we shall include this, people uh, that use i3 used to uh, normally use this. Um, we create an, a workstar file, uh, sorry, a kickstar file uh, that it was put it together by Nasir and we was put it for the distribution by Odilon. So we just start to create a distro. So we have the goal to make i3 Windows Manager more approachable and useful for Fedora users. And the idea is not only because i3 is normally used by power users, by sysadmin, but people that love the keyboard because it's a keyboard drive, the keyboard driven environment. Uh, but because of the little uh, memory, uh, it use and the low, the literal resources it use. Um, we think more people can use this environment. That once you get hard to configure it or it's not hard to get used, how people normally think about Windows managers that are hard to use, it's not hard to use. To adjust your workflow to that, and and we want to people to know that it's not that hard to use. So we, yeah these design goals and we discuss it and put it uh, into our documents because we think that um, these are the focus we have to create the distro, the, the spin we are using. No? So um, the first design goal is that simple is better than complex. We are not trying to create something very, very complex to use. People just can get used uh, faster. Uh, fast is better than features where even when we include, of course, the most important uh, features that Fedora is spyware like BTRF compression, like the uh, system D OOM. Uh, our goal is that the distro is fast and low resource uses. There should be one and preferably only one obvious way to do that. And this is because there are tons of packages that do the same thing in our distro because people love different things to do this. The configuration and the word data. For example, there is like, I don't know, like 10, maybe 15 PDF readers in, in the distro. So uh, we are trying to create one. We discuss it. We maybe take two, three, four weeks discussing if something is going to be included or not. What are the advantages? Testing it. Uh, how many memory, how much memory consumed, how much is used in the community, how feedback you can get, how is maintained upstream. And to have just only one way to do this stuff in your, in your desktop. And now it's better than never. We're trying to, uh, this is something that we came uh, across because people uh, keep up. It's still telling us that why we choose i3 that is based on the X server and no using SWI that is based on Wayland where uh, X server is supposed to be deprecated relatively soon. And you say, well, now it's better than never. Uh, you can start the project when you want and the idea is just to complete it. No, no have it at, at a specific moment of the time.
so we are going to talk about the spin. Uh, people don't know that a spin is a community maintained uh, version of Fedora that you can a specific environment. There is, a, there, is, there is another approach that is the Fedora Labs. There are distributions that are uh, potentially targeting one specific topic like astronomy, like design, like gaming, like security. And that is the labs. The spins are normally just Fedora with a specific desktop environment. So spins for desktop environment and labs for theming targets. And created a spin in Fedora is not that hard. Normally you start like a Fedora Remix. You can check the documentation on how to do it. It's really, it's not that hard. And if you follow the documentation we have in, in the i3 documentation on, on the Fedora docs, uh, you're going to find that you only need to know how to write a, a Kickstarter file that is not that hard. So <clears throat> uh, the Fedora i3 is, uh, is really, really small. We have just a few software in it, and most of the software, software we have is uh, uh, RCLI tools. We, at the moment, we are not shipping, for example, something that I got asked a lot too. Uh, we are not shipping an office suite. People just can get the office suite they want because you can install whatever thing you want to include in your in your environment. So normally we have used Firefox because browsing the network is uh, really, really needed. Um, we have a network manager applet to control the network manager, to, to control the network, uh, to connect to to Wi-Fi or or control or or, uh, or related to your network, we have an MSCLI that is the uh, the CLI tools from the network manager to control the network. If you don't want to use the applet, you can do it just by the uh, by the network manager applet. We have uh, RSVT because we have uh, we need to include a terminal man a terminal emulator. We have a program to control the background that is called Azore, or I don't know how it's called in English. I just pronounce it in, pronounce it in Spanish. It's Azote. We have Mousepad because we have a text editor. We have Tuner that is our file manager or the file manager we are pushing. We have Dunst that is the notification system. And a lot of tools that in, are included in i3, like the i3 status and i3 log, that are software that put the var on under the the desktop and uh, i3 log is just to log your screen. So how we build the the Fedora i3 spin? During yeah. meetings to discuss uh, what software is going to be included or what decisions we have to make when things are pending to create the distribution. And we use the Pagur issue tracker to do all of this and they get forced to maintain our Kickstarter files. So this uh, the, uh, this is the link of the issue tracker we are using in, uh, for the district. Uh, we get together in, normally in IRC bridges to, to matrix. Uh, that's the uh, matrix uh, URL using element that is basically the the most common uh, interface that is used by uh, to get matrix and once we get all together we put our kickstart in the fedora kickstart uh, we have a, a member that is called odilon that is the one that is controlling the fedora kickstart part of the of the fedora i3 spin and he is doing amazing work uh, contacting uh, the the relay and uh, all the engineers that <laughs> run the infrastructure in Fedora to get our Kickstarter uh, pull it off with the uh, parameters how it should be built. Uh, even when it's easier to create a Kickstarter file to include it in Fedora, you need to follow several. Um, I'm not going to say rules, but at least parameters to to make it right. So um, he's controlling this and is working beautiful. So. Now I'm going to show you a demo. Now I don't know how to pull. Stop this. I assume I should. 
stop this and this, this again. And I would say this. Sure. So now this is uh, the starting part. Normally the Fedora ISO running. So you say just start. I'm going to show you this fast uh, because the installation process is long. I just want to show you something that I also get used, uh, get asked too much. Uh, people that is not familiar with uh, uh, <clears throat> with Windows, you need to know the modification key or the modifier key that it will be the center of your workflow. After that, uh, almost all of the Windows uh, the modifier key plus enter to open a terminal and from there you start to work. This is the first configuration screen when i3 is asking you if you want to create the configuration or you want to use the default. And I use the the, the so-called uh, window screen. For a scale screen, you use X render or a render. This screen is not going to be the the screen, this is just the installation screen. So when you enter the terminal, like I say, modify plus enter, uh, you're going to be showing a message that say, uh, type live inst to start the installer. You can say just live inst. And it's going to show you a super scary sc splitted screen that people get scared very easily. Uh, I, I I think we are going to to put the modificator W to expand the the window, and from here you follow normally and the the normal installation flow in uh, in, in Anaconda. No, so I'm going to restart this machine. I already have. Uh, the an installation. Now this is your XBT. People use uh, keep on te uh, keep telling that this is not the best the terminal emulator, but it's very small and it's basically the one that I three use by default. But from here you can install whatever you want to install. And now I'm going to show you more 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 the features of the Windows Manager, not only installation of software. So we have <coughs> the configuration file that is something that people need to know is in dot config slash i3 slash config you do three sorry and this is the installation file don't worry about the text that it, you cannot read because it's green you can just read you need just read the the black uh, uh, text and this is the um, standard i3 configuration we are not take, uh, touching the configuration file yet we are we want to put some stuff but right now we are using just the standard and you we just add the uh, the nma applet the network manager applet as you can see here you use mod return to to open a terminal You close or kill the windows. This is the way to close the software using mod chief Q. And with mod D, you put D menu. D menu is the software that is used to, to run software, to start your programs. 
Now, the way the Tilling Windows Manager works, and I'm going to show you a little of, of my magic here, is that, uh, as you can see, Windows never get uh, one on top of each other. They are always put uh, in form of tiles, and we can start just poking around. So you can create an arrangement. I'm going to put it uh, a little smaller so you can see in the position you want. And you have until 10 workspaces, uh, uh, work spaces, sorry. So you can have one, two. If you see, then you cannot see because it's super small. Gigantic. You can one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. That is the 10 one. And you can move windows from one space to another. And you can see there is an inactive workspace because there is a window there. I put it there. You can move it to the 10 workspace. See, now the idea of, of i3 is that you can have a, a tree of a Boolean tree of oh, managers in a different way. But you can also put it in for of tabs or a tablet uh, layout. When you can say here in the upper part, there are tabs with the application and they are all full screen. I think with the Tilling Window Manager that normally get people mad as the normally applications run full, not all uh, applications are made to run full screen. For example, uh, uh, the calculator uh, is not intended to be used full screen because it's a small application but you can uh, make your window floating it's not the idea because you are using a tilling window manager why to create a tilling uh, use a floating window but you can do it with window chief space you can move your windows around put it again and other thing is that you can resize your your windows so <clears throat> i think this is very adaptable to every application i normally use as a sysadmin now a devops engineer so this uh, type of um, configuration works for me very well um everything that you can install in a in fedora is installable in our spin of course everything that is in our repos so we have just a few number of programs. I normally recommend people to use, uh, to switch a D menu for D menu desktop. And I'm going to show you the difference. I'm sorry, I'm used to beam. Oh. How you get out of nano? Oh, control X. Yeah. And yeah, I know the screen is too small. I just want to show you this up here. You can see there is like the name of commands, no programs. So if you can find, but if you use The other configuration, uh, fresh. Why is this not working? Yeah. Something is wrong with my screen. Just give me a second. What is this suffering? I didn't know what happened. Uh, let me stop this a little bit. And now I'm going to share the entire screen.
this is my i3 desktop environment, my complete desktop. So if you can see up here, there is our desktop files. That is the difference between the oh okay. Uh, this is the difference between the D menu and the i3 D menu desktop that it runs with desktop files and not with comments. And um, because I'm running out of time, I'm going to put the, the next uh, uh, slide to give you a little moment of question. To get involved, you get you can just get yourself into a meeting in the IRC uh, pound Fedora dot uh, dash i three or in the matrix. Uh, uh, <coughs> it was uh, shared in the in the chat uh, you can test the image we build um, you can help uh, packaging you can help testing you can help documenting you just need your uh, into a meeting or into a room and just chat with us our communication channels like i say in irc in freenode is pound fedora dash i3 in matrix is pound fedora dash i3 colon matrix dot org um, in Telegram, we have the at Fedora i3 or our mailing list at i3wm at list.fedoraproject.org. Uh, just write to us and start working with us. If you have questions. <clears throat> Uh, the QAI tab, sure. I always forgot that. GTK application, for example, like chat, take more than a minute to load. Usually just uh, wait window till things are loaded. Any recommendation to fix that? Uh, well, I never get uh, this problem. Maybe you can, you need to check how much CPU are you using or if there is a problem reading your disk. Uh, but no, no, specifically with the environment, no, I don't have any any idea of can be happen or why this this happening. Will there be a test day for this? As this seems to be something gaining popularity. Yes, uh, we tried very hard to have a test day before the Fedora 32, uh, 34 release, but it got hard to to get involved because I was doing tons of stuff and life happens but yes we want to include a test day uh we're moving our ticket for the testing or the issue we are using our issue tracker from fedora 34 for fedora 35 but yes we want to to create a, a test day with you uh, is there a key to run a program that is not a terminal you can set that not normally there is not set it uh, is uh, for example, I have in my in my configuration I have a uh, mod shift F to run Firefox and <clears throat> mod shift V to create uh, to run uh, Vim in or VIEM. Uh, how do you get the bash for the release party that you have to uh, ask the <laughs> the moderators? Also, I, I'm not sure how. Maybe in the, we can have the answer in the chat. But yes, uh, Luna, you can create any uh, key combination to run a program specifically. Uh, terminal is one that is set by default because it's the start of everything. But you can set any program you want or you like. I used to have genome screenshot. That is the screenshot tool that I'm using. Uh, Firefox, Vim, uh, I think. That's all. Ah, Brave, because I use Brave, uh, the Brave browser in my work. Uh, set it specifically to a, a key you want. So you can create any combination of key you want to launch any program you want to launch. Also, I modify my menu. I'm not using the menu, I'm using Rofi. But yes, you can create any any combination you want in your .config, uh, i3 .config. If there is no other question, I think I'm I'm past my time for two minutes. So 
Oh, yes, and over time. So thank you for coming and see you in other rooms of the place. Thank you for coming. Bye.